So it's the end of another month, which means that today's video is a book of the month video, and this month I have been reading The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. If you're new here, hello, my name is Tori Cyclic. I make new videos every Sunday for Cyclic Sunday with other videos throughout the week. If you like what you see, like this video down below and subscribe while you're down there as well. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram in the description at TSS6295. Now, let's get into the video. So this month I ended up reading another book that's been adapted into a TV show slash movie, which is The Devil Wears Prada. I really, really, really love The Devil Wears Prada movie. My sisters and I are really big fans of Anne Hathaway, and I've watched The Devil Wears Prada probably like 15 times. I feel like The Devil Wears Prada is always one that I'm drawn to a lot because it's like the grown up version of Anne Hathaway. Also, Meryl Streep is just at her absolute best acting wise. She's just absolutely incredible as Miranda Priestly. And then there's Stanley Tucci, Emily Blunt, just like there's a lot about <laughs> about this movie that I just really love. When I discovered it was a book, I put it on my list of like books to read and then finally went out and bought it and read it this month. But the thing about the book and the movie is that they are vastly different. The main things that are the same about them are the name of Runway the magazine, the name of Elias Clark the company, the name of Miranda Priestly, the name Nandy Sachs, the name Emily, and the name Nigel. And that's pretty much it. All of the characters are very, very different. Even though they have the same names as the characters in the books in the movie, they're very, very different people. And that was one of the things that was a little bit hard for me while I was reading this book because I love the movie so much. And I was like, oh, the characters aren't like the characters that I know. It was interesting reading Good Omens and then reading The Devil Wears Prada because Good Omens is a very literal book to movie adaptation because it was adapted by Neil Gaiman to become a TV show. But The Devil Wears Prada is very much not that at all. It's a completely different world, the book versus the movie. I had to look this up because I was like, how can a book and a movie be so different? And I looked it up here, it says it on Wikipedia, as well as on, on a couple other sources as well. During pre-production, Fox bought the rights to Weisberger's novel before it was not only published in 2003, but before it was even finished. Carla Hecken, the then studio executive's vice president, had only seen the first hundred pages of the manuscript and an outline for the, how the rest of the plot was to go, but that was enough for her to go on. I thought Miranda Priestly was one of the greatest villains ever, she recalled in 2016. I remember we aggressively went in and scooped it up. Andy Sachs, who's the character that Anne Hathaway played in the movie, is so different in the book. In the book, she is much more snarky and much more strong-willed. She also is like a much more worldly person because she's traveled a lot more. She went to Brown. She did a lot of different things before she ends up at Runway, whereas in the movie she went to Northwestern and it feels like she's like in her late 20s, but in the book she's only 23. So I'm like, that's me at my age thinking about how she traveled the world and then went right to working at a fashion magazine. So I'm like, okay, I'm connecting to this in a different way because now I'm seeing Andy Sachs through like my 23 year old eyes. Okay, that's a little bit different. So opinionated about working at Runway versus working at the New York Times and the New Yorker, which is what she really wants to do as a writer and how she's very strong willed about that in the book instead of in the movie where Andy is very much like, I don't know anything about fashion, I just wanna be a writer and just takes the job because it's available. There's one line in the book that I honestly really hated how many times they said it because they say it in the course of maybe like 10 pages, they probably say it about, 20 times it feels like. It's definitely not that, but it feels like it's said that many times. And I feel like they say it once or twice in the movie, and I was like, okay, this makes sense for it to be said a couple times in the movie. They say that working for Miranda Priestly is a job that a million girls would die for, and they say it so many times in the book. I'm like, all right, I know. It doesn't have to be said so many times. Like, we get it. We know from the first time you say it, that it's a very important thing in the book, that working for Miranda Priestly is a big deal, but like every single person that Andy meets in her first few days of working at Runway says this to her, and I'm like, all right, just move on past this point, we get it. On page 38 of the book, you get a whole character background of Miranda Priestly. I'm pretty sure that didn't happen in the movie, and if it did, it definitely wasn't the character background that's in the book, so I'm gonna read a little bit of it. I had Googled her and was surprised to find that Miranda Priestly was born Miriam Princhek in London's East End. Hers was like all the other Orthodox Jewish families in the town, stunningly poor but devout. Her father occasionally worked odd jobs, but mostly they relied on the community for support since he spent most of his days studying Jewish text. Her mother had died in childbirth with Miriam, and it was her mother who moved in and helped raise the children. And there were children, 11 in all. Most of her brothers and sisters went on to work blue-collar jobs like their father, with little time to do anything but pray and work. A couple managed to get themselves into and through the university, only to marry young and begin having large families of their own. Miriam was the single exception to family tradition. After saving the small bills, her older siblings would slip her whenever they were available. Miriam promptly dropped out of high school upon turning 17, a mere three months shy of graduation to take a job as 
an assistant to an up-and-coming British designer, helping him to put together his shows for each season. After a few years of making her name for herself as one of the darlings of London's burgeoning fashion world and studying French at night, she scored a job as a junior editor at the French Chic magazine in Paris. By this time, she had little to do with her family. They didn't understand her life or ambitions, and she was embarrassed by their old-fashioned piety and overwhelming lack of sophistication. The alienation from her family was completed shortly after joining French Chic, when at 24 years old, Miriam Princhek became Miranda Priestley, shedding her an undeniably ethnic name for one with more panache. There are so many detailed descriptions of all of the outfits that the girls who work at Runway wear in the book that it seems like Andy has a lot more knowledge of fashion than she's led to believe. Granted, this is like a retelling of her story from after the events have happened in the book, but it seems like Andy is paying a lot more attention to this than you would think she would be because from the beginning you know that Andy Sachs is a person who doesn't care about fashion or doesn't really know much about fashion but then she's talking about all the details of all these different outfits and clothing that all these women are wearing. It's kind of a weird character thing in the book that I'm like it doesn't make sense but then it kind of didn't make sense because it's being told from a future standpoint but yeah it's a little bit unclear to me. The big thing that I noticed in the book is Andy's boyfriend. We all know that Andy's boyfriend in the movie becomes the worst character in the movie because he just becomes a snobby, stuck-up, self-centered asshole. But in the book, he's great! First of all, his name is Alex in the book. In the movie, it's Nate. Second of all, he is a very nice and supportive guy. He wants to be with Andy. He, like, wants to hear about her job at Runway, whereas Nate in the movie just, like, doesn't give a crap and tells her to, like, leave the job all the time and gets annoyed with her. Yes, Andy isn't the most supportive person to him either sometimes in the movie, but he's much more not supportive of her. Whereas, like, in the book, I was like, this is the kind of guy that, like, she should want to be with and she does want to be with and he's very supportive of her and it's, I think it's a good thing for her in the book because he's much more supportive and she's only 23 and she doesn't really know what's going on within the world of runway so it's good for her to have like a good support system outside of work. The thing that I kind of hate to say about The Devil Wears Prada is that from reading the book I kind of like the movie more. I hate to say it that way. I hate to say it that way. It's just in my opinion the characters in the movie are much more likable and you can connect with them a lot more. Like Nigel in the book to me is very very aggressive and I love Stanley Tucci in the movie and I think him and his relationship with with Andy in the movie is so strong because that becomes like a safe haven for her at work. And Emily is very different in the book than she is in the movie. I like the way that Emily Blunt plays her in the movie. I just really love her interpretation of the character and I just I just love Meryl Streep as Miranda Priestley. Trying to read the book through that mindset of Miranda Priestley as Meryl Streep it's not that at all, so trying to disconnect that as well was a bit hard for me too. I just feel like the characters in the book are a lot less likable than the characters in the movie. And I hate to say it that way because it's not like I didn't enjoy the book. I definitely enjoyed the book, but that made it a little bit harder for me to like really get into the book because I was like, I don't really like these characters as much as I like them in the movie. Ugh. So those are all of my thoughts about The Devil Wears Prada. If you've read the book, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. If you've seen the movie, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. If you have any book recommendations for me, let me know about those in the comments down below as well. And if there's anything you'd like to see here on my channel, let me know about that in the comments down below as well. Thank you so much for watching DFTBA, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!